Hi, I'm Dawn Combs here at SodaFarmLife.com and today I wanted to show you how to make a mustard plaster. It's something that I have written about in my book Heal Local and, uh, and why you would use it. And I most recently wrote about it on the blog at SodaFarmLife.com. I have a couple different ways to do this. One is uh, because people get really overwhelmed when they first start taking care of themselves in this natural way and they worry about having all the parts and pieces, we actually have made a mustard plaster that you can order online and it's all ready, no muss, no fuss. Um, so this is our ready-made mustard plaster. Stick all the way through this video and I'm gonna show you how to do it on your own with, with your own ingredients at home. So we start with this. This is what's going to come out of our mustard plaster package. Uh, if you read the blog or you're going to read the blog, mustard plasters are really important to know how to do for, especially for respiratory issues. So any kind of cough or lack of cough when we've got congestion in the chest and we're not getting anything up, it's not a productive cough, or we've got pain or heaviness in our chest, but nothing's coming up. We need to get that moving. So we use uh, an expectorant tea here at the farm, and you can do any number of teas to help that happen from inside the body, but sometimes it's really helpful to do a plaster. I like to do these plasters in combination with maybe sitting in a steamy shower to get the insides of our lungs warm and moist and loose so that when we do get working and get coughing, it's not ripping or tearing at that really sensitive skin on the inside of the lungs. Um, this is, mustard is deep, deep heat. So what we're gonna do is take this mustard plaster and I'm just gonna demo it for you here. Um, put it in a bowl and pour hot water over this until it gets until it gets moist. We're gonna let that get all plastered up and it's gonna make sort of a tea out of the water. That's okay. Our mustard plaster is inside there. Um, I have my handy dandy model back here. Um, when you're working at home and you're uh, on your health, you need some tools. And one of those things is old t-shirts, old jammies. This is a cut up, you can just sort of see. It was a little child's tank top. And it's perfect, because I just cut straight down one seam and I cut off the top. And I'm gonna use that, when you do a mustard plaster, whether you make one on your own or whether you use ours, it doesn't matter. You need to put something down to protect the skin. Mustard plasters are going to superheat and it can burn your skin. So if you have really, really sensitive skin, you might even wanna put some oil down on the back, even between this layer. But uh, we're just gonna do this for right now. We're, we're not super sensitive. The idea here is that we're going to, I'm just gonna wring a little bit of the moisture out so that it's not really wet on the back. And I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna press this out so that I get as much surface area. Uh, some of the marketing campaigns for cold and flu, the, the rub that we put on, it, the TV commercials always show us putting it on the chest. For the most effective use here, we wanna put it on the back, not on the chest. Uh, you can go ahead and use it on the chest too. So I can flip him and uh, on a second round, put it on his chest. But this first round, I'm, I'm gonna really focus on the back between the shoulder blades. So this is gonna go right down on top of his shoulder blades and then I'm gonna wrap that's what's so nice about this t-shirt is I've got it cut open and it makes a sandwich it's very convenient I can put that right there and then I'm going to take a heating pad and I'm gonna lay that right on top of that whole thing and he's gonna lay there and watch TV or a movie and just hang out for about 20 minutes uh, like I said, I can flip him over and I can do the exact same sandwich layer on his chest for another 20 minutes. And I would do this throughout the day and alternating possibly in the shower with that steam. You do not want mucus sitting in the lungs without coming out. It's a Petri dish. It's where all the bacteria is gonna congregate. We create mucus in the lungs 
as a reaction. It's the body's sensitivity. It's our defense mechanism. That mucus is created. It traps that viral invader or the bacteria. And then the idea is after it's trapped, you get irritated and you cough it out. It's a great mechanism unless it's stuck. And if it's stuck in our lungs, we begin to ramp up on the viral load and on the bacteria. And so what we can, we can go from a simple virus that we might be able to be down for a bit and then feel better to a bacterial infection that comes along beside it. We don't want that. We really need to get that mucus out of the chest and out of the sinuses. So this is gonna help with our chest. Um, now, once I've done this for 20 minutes, I do not open this up and then take this off and just throw it in the trash can. We're not drawing anything out into this pack. So this is fine. We can reuse this. You can sit it on the counter and let it, uh, let it dry. You can put it into a Tupperware and stick it in the refrigerator and then bring it back out and warm it back up and use it again, over and over again, really, until it kind of starts to disintegrate. So you could use this one pack throughout one, one cold, really, because this should start working pretty quickly for you. You shouldn't have to keep buying these over and over and over again. Um, the benefit here to what we're making is it's all self-contained and when you are done, you can throw it all away and the mess and everything is contained, which is attractive to some people. Um, but what if you use it only once or twice on someone and you dry it out and you wanna keep it? What else could you use it for? Um, you could use it for, uh, you could use it for arthritis or a sore muscle or sore joint. You can use it for gout. There are other reasons that you might wanna use a mustard plaster. Um, the reason why I'm bringing this out now is in connection to the respiratory issues that are going around. So that's just the chief one that we use it for. But you do not have to use a ready-made like this. Maybe you're more of a do-it-yourselfer do it person. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You are going to need flour. And by the way, this is mixed with flour. We do these in both gluten-free and wheat flour uh, versions. The reason for that is, is that uh, there are a lot of people who are sensitive to gluten who would have contact reaction to it. So uh, it is important if you are one of those people and you're making your own that you use gluten-free flour. Right now, this is a mix of just regular wheat flour. We're gonna use one part mustard seed powder, this yellow mustard seed powder, to two parts of whatever flour we're gonna use, and we mix it up so you can see the color of the mustard versus what we're looking for. It's diluted. This is because if you use too much of just the mustard powder, it will superheat. My husband is one of these victims. Uh, I added mustard powder and ginger powder and I didn't cut it and uh, put it right. I put it, I did put a layer, but even through the layer, it burnt. It was like a sunburn. Uh, so you can raise blisters with this. This is why we put a layer of protection between whatever pack we use. Now, if I am not using a pre-made pack, I'm gonna mix up my base and then I'm going to add it. I'm just gonna pour some of this off. I'm gonna add it to a little bit of water. And what I'm looking for, I've lost my spoon somewhere. Um, I'm looking for a paste. So that's pretty good. We're looking for like a dough-like consistency and I'm gonna have a cloth again that I want to then put on here and I'm going to spread it out. Now, I would do a full patch across the, the back here between the shoulder blades and you don't need to do it super deep. That's good. We're gonna do the same thing again. We would fold our cloth over top of this and we would put a heating pad on and again 20 minutes he watches tv he enjoys a movie uh, maybe we flip him over and we put it on his chest as well 
and then we can take that off. It's a little more messy. Uh, it's a little more difficult to reuse this over and over again with this, but this is a pretty simple preparation. Uh, it has helped, I've used it to help a lot of my clients, uh, a lot of our customers that are looking for help taking care of illnesses at home. Staying home and taking care of an illness does not mean you're just laying around waiting for some miracle of getting better. It is work. It requires you to take action. You cannot just lay down and hope for the best because with a respiratory issue, it doesn't get better, it gets worse. You just progressively get worse. It gets harder for you to get oxygen. It hurts more. It gets harder for you to get things up and out of the chest and we need oxygen, it's kind of important. So don't just lay there and wait and hope for the best. You need to take action. This is one of those tools that is really important to have in your home toolkit. It's one that I recommend um, in my book, Heal Local. Grab it here. It's one that I recommend in this book. Uh, knowing how to do something simple like this can be the difference between you developing a pneumonia and not. Um, I talk about the different colors of phlegm in that blog post. So for more ideas on how to continue to take care of yourself while you're, you're in triage when you're taking care of yourself, you're always within your own bounds, what you're capable of doing. And when it goes outside of your bounds, when the phlegm that you cough up is green and red and bloody, we are done at home, it's time to go to the hospital. So knowing where your limits are, which I talk a lot about in Heal Local, um, the, having these tools in your tool chest to be able to take care of simple things to head off the eventuality of going to the emergency room is, it's a lifesaver. It's a pocket saver. Uh, it will help your family immensely and these are simple, simple tools. So for more ideas, and uh, for more information and research, uh, I publish all of that stuff in my books, but also at sodafarmlife.com. You can always visit us on the farm as well and check out how we are living this life, um, not just talking about it. So be well, let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you next time.